assalamu alaikum this is a presentation for medical students by dr mumtaz ahmed umar and today's topic is acute tonsillitis this picture presents partly the oral cavity and mainly the oropharynx if you can see these are the palatine tonsils with crypts prominent crypts there this is a soft palate and the uvula the palatine tonsils are the two lymphatic tissue masses which are located on each side of the oropharynx in the back of the throat each tonsil consists of the surface epithelium which is continuous with the oropharyngeal lining crypts which are the tube like invasions from the surface epithelium and the lymphoid tissues so to acute tonsillitis is defined as an inflammation of the tonsil that frequently occurs in combination with an inflammation of the pharynx and together they are known as tonsillopharyngitis it is the inflammation of rapid onset etiology it mainly affects the school going children between ages of 5 to 15 years and it really affects adults more than 50 years the most common affecting organism is the group a beta hemolytic streptococcus and other organisms which can affect are uh, streptococci pneumococci haemophilus influenza and anaerobes it can be a primary infection bacterial infection or secondary to the viral infection it is further classified into four subtypes known as the acute collateral tonsillitis acute parenchymatous tonsillitis acute follicular tonsillitis and acute membranous tonsillitis acute collateral tonsillitis which is also known as the superficial tonsillitis because here the tonsillitis is a part of the generalized pharyngitis and it is mostly seen in viral infections acute parenchymatous tonsillitis here the tonsillitis substance is affected and tonsils are uniformly enlarged and red in acute follicular tonsillitis infection spreads into the scripts which becomes filled with the prurient material presenting at the opening of the crypts as yellowish spots acute membranous tonsillitis is the stage which is ahead of the acute follicular tonsillitis when the exudation from the crypts coalesce to form the membrane on the surface of the tonsils patient will present with sore throat dysphagia which is difficulty in swallowing or dysphagia which is a painful swallowing so in these patients mostly there will be no true dysphagia but difficulty in swallowing will be due to local pain then fever which can range from 38 to 40 degrees centigrade and may be associated with chills and dry gas ear ache can also be present which can either be a referred pain from the tonsils or the result of acute otitis media and patient may also have constitutional symptoms including the headache general body aches and pains malaise and may also have abdominal pain especially in small children due to the mesenteric lymph adenitis so on examining the throat the signs or the examination findings which will be there is the bad breath the tongue may be coated there will be hyperemia of the pillars of palate and uvula tonsils are red and swollen with enlarged and tender jugular digastric lymph nodes these two points are the main diagnostic examination findings for acute tonsillitis and this tenderness of the jugular digastric lymph nodes and red swollen tonsils tonsils are also the differentiating points from the chronic tonsillitis then individually in acute follicular tonsillitis the yellow spots of prurient material can be seen or visible at the opening of the crypts uh, whereas in membranous tonsillitis a whitish membrane will be seen on the medial surface of the tonsils and it can be easily wiped away with a swab whereas in acute parenchymatous tonsillitis both the tonsils they will be enlarged and congested and may meet in the midline with some edema of the uvula and soft palate so how to investigate first of all we have to do the blood complete picture which will show increased wbc count mainly neutrophilia then the diagnostic test will be the throat swab for culture and sensitivity which will show the infective organism and in some cases we may have to do a monospot test 
which is a blood test to detect certain antibodies and help to diagnose infectious mononucleosis. Treatment It depends upon the condition of the patient, but it mainly includes bed rest, plenty of fluids, which should not be too cold, warm saline gargles, analgesics and antipyretics, brufen and paracetamol are mainly given, antimicrobial therapy in which the first line antibiotic is the penicillin, but macrolides can be prescribed in those allergic to penicillin. Antibiotics are continuous, continued for 7 to 10 days. Complications. If the acute tonsillitis it is not treated properly, it can give rise to complications like the peritonsillar abscess and the parapharyngeal abscess. If the patient continue ha to have recurrent acute attacks with persistence in the lymphoid follicles and tonsils as microabscesses, then it will lead to chronic tonsillitis. And other less common complications are the cervical abscess, if there is suppression of the jugular tract, strict lymph node, acute otitis media, rheumatic fever, acute glomerulonephritis, and subacute bacterial endocarditis. But last three, four, they are rare. Thank you.